Everywhere you look, in every nook and cranny during this season of life, the flowers are there. Spilling down from a grassy verge, buttercups display a shower of gold for drivers who speed by it too quickly to grasp the glory poured out freely for all to see. The flowers you see do not bloom for us. They do not care whether or not we see them. They grow and bloom because they are full of life, because the history of the species impels them to display their glory, not to the world, but as part of the world, because the world would be incomplete without the riot of blossoms which express nature's voiceless joy in life. We know they are a gift of grace, softening the harsh edges of reality. They invite us to seek the beauty in each moment. They encourage us to find fulfilment in life and the living of it. And they remind us that nothing is forever. Each moment with its beauty and fulfilment passes on into another moment with gifts to be discovered and savoured. One cannot keep the moment any more than one can keep the flower. One can only rejoice and give thanks for the grace which makes this world our home, a setting of beauty and delight, where we too may be lived by life, with nothing to gain, nothing to prove. We too are products of nature's extravagance. Each of us unique, mingled together, interacting, we do not become less unique, but rather find our uniqueness heightened. Here in this space, this human community, we find the fuller dimensions of our individuality, the richer meaning of our existence, the profound delight of this world and the precious life we've been given. These opening words taken from a longer piece by David Bumble, this, these words may welcome all of us who have gathered here on Zoom this morning to take part in our Sunday service. Welcome to regulars, regular members of the Essex Church congregation. Welcome to friends, old and new. Welcome to those who might be listening via the podcast or watching on YouTube sometime in the future. For those who don't know me, my name is Jane Blackall and I'm Ministry Coordinator with Kensington Unitarians. Hope each one of you finds something of what you need in our gathering this morning. Please do hang around afterwards, stay for a chat if you'd like. You can always drop us an email to say hello during the week if you'd rather, or come along to one of our small group gatherings to get to know us a little bit better. If it's your first time or your thousandth, you are welcome and valued. We all have a part to play in co-creating this special sacred community. As we always say, feel free to do what you need to do to be comfortable this hour. It's lovely to see your faces, but it's fine to keep your camera mainly off. Uh, particularly today, there will be opportunities to join in with interactive bits, but they are invitations, not obligations. It is fine to sit back if you don't want to join in. This morning's service is our virtual flower communion. This is a special Unitarian tradition. It's a service we hold each summer. The flower communion was created by the Czech Unitarian minister Norbert Čapek almost a century ago um, as a celebration of unity in diversity and the power of giving and receiving in community according to our diverse gifts and needs. We'll hear a bit more about the history and the symbolism of this ritual later on in the service. Hopefully you'll have all got the message uh, encouraging you to bring along a single flower to our service today. Um, if not, you could bring a, a picture of a favourite bloom or you can just describe an imaginary flower to us. Don't, don't feel excluded if you didn't get the memo. And later on in the second half of the service, I will invite you to take part in a flower communion ceremony specially adapted for uh, Zoom. I'll explain how we're going to do it when we get there. But before we go any further, I'm going to do what we always do, and that's to light our chalice. This is a simple ritual that connects us with Unitarians and Unitarian Universalists the world over. And it reminds us of the proudly progressive religious tradition of which this gathering is part. We are all capable in different ways with various strengths and talents. We're all holy, part of this universe and the interdependent web of life. So we light this chalice 
cherishing our differences and holding each other in sacredness. So let's think of those joys and concerns that we've heard expressed all those windows into our shared human condition and the life of the wider world. And let's hold them in a spirit of loving kindness as we move into an extended time of prayer and reflection now. You might want to shift yourself to get comfortable. You might want to close your eyes. It might be a posture that feels more prayerful for you. Whatever works to help you get into the right state of body and mind for us to be fully present with ourselves, each other, and that which is both within us and beyond us. Spirit of life, God of all love, in whom we live and move and have our being. As we turn our attention to the depths of this life, the cosmic mystery and wisdom that abides in all that is, we tune in to your holy presence, the light within and without. Be with us now as we allow ourselves to drop into the silence and stillness at the centre of our being. Our words sometimes fail us, our minds fail us. When we ponder the enormity, the diversity, the complexity, wonder and beauty of this universe, this world. And yet we sense more than know that our lives are part of a larger life. We are connected with everyone and everything in one interdependent web of being. And there is something imminent, transcendent, that nurtures and sustains life itself. Something that calls us and all life to greater wholeness and harmony. So we give thanks this morning for the gifts and blessings of life, for this day, for the beauty and wonder and mystery of creation, for our families and friends, for health and work, for opportunities to learn and love and grow, for the care and support of others in times of illness and despair. But we remember too that others, our human kin around the world, here in this gathering and across the nation, so many live in poverty, in fear, in hunger, in isolation and insecurity. So many are ground down by systems of oppression and injustice or caught up in chaos and confusion, not of their own making. So in the silence of this gathering and the silence of our hearts, may we hear the call to a wider perspective and a deeper resolve. May we live with greater compassion and care for ourselves, for others, and for all creation. May we touch each other more deeply, hear each other more clearly, and see each other's joys and sorrows as our own. May we strive to be and become more than we are, more loving, more forgiving, more kind, more honest, more authentic, more open, more connected, more whole. And yet, paradoxically, may we accept ourselves just as we are in this very moment and know that we are enough. May we heal and be healed. May we face life's uncertainties and even tragedies with hope and faith and courage, knowing that life is good and we are not alone. And in a time of silence now, may our hearts speak all the prayers of our lives inwardly, our soul's greatest joys and deepest sorrows, our triumphs and failures, regrets and fears, our hopes and dreams. Let us lift up silently 
whatever's on our heart this day. Spirit of life, God of all love, as this time of prayer draws to a close, we offer up our joys and concerns, our hopes and our fears, our beauty and our brokenness. And we call on you for insight, healing and renewal. As we look forward to the coming week, help us to live well each day and be our best selves, using our unique gifts in the service of love, justice and peace. Amen. Time to sing. Uh, our first hymn is a, is a flower communion special, Bring Flowers to Our Altar, sung by the Unitarian Music Society. As usual, the words will be up on your screen so you can sing along at home or you might prefer just to listen instead. This is an adapted reading by Evan Keeley called A Short History of Flower Communion. This year marks the 99th anniversary of the founding of the Religious Society of Czech Unitarians. Its first minister, the Reverend Dr. Norbert Čapek, created a ritual that is celebrated by Unitarians and Unitarian Universalists all over the world to this day, flower communion. Chapek described the ceremony in a 1923 letter to Samuel Atkins Eliot II, president of the American Unitarian Association. It said, we have made a new experiment in symbolizing our liberty and brotherhood 
in a service which was so powerful and impressive that I never experienced anything like it. On that very Sunday, everybody was supposed to bring with him a flower. In the middle of the big hall was a suitable table with a big vase where everybody put his flower. In my sermon, I put emphasis on the individual character of each member flower, on our liberty as a foundation of our fellowship. Then I emphasised our common cause, our belonging together as one spiritual community. And when they go home, each is to take one flower, just as it comes, without making any distinction where it came from and whom it represents. To confess that we accept each other as brothers and sisters, without regard to class, race, or other distinction, acknowledging everybody as our friend who is human and wants to be good. Chapex written words there. This marvelous natural beauty of the flowers that are brought to these ceremonies is certainly inspiring, but it is of the most up it is of the utmost importance that we continue to learn the broader and deeper lesson this rite teaches. The idea that we should accept one another with all our differences and that we should even celebrate one another's uniqueness. It's a radical notion in any age, but in Europe in the 1920s, it was downright dangerous. It became ever more so, of course, in the decades that followed, especially as Czechoslovakia found itself amongst the first nations to succumb to the opportunistic infection that was Nazism. The Nazis, of course, represented the polar opposite of Czapek's ideals. Flower communion is, is a defiant no in the face of the brutal racism of Hitler and the fascists craving to erect towering, horrific empires upon pediments of subjugation and terror. And it's a joyous yes to diversity, equality and liberty. As Unitarians and Unitarian Universalists all over the world celebrate flower communion, as so many of us do at this season of the year, we do well to consider what it is we are saying no to and where our joyous yes is. Do we continue to defy the forces of intolerance that seek to deny equal rights to all, which persecute minority groups and make scapegoats of outsiders in order to divide and conquer? Do we stand together clutching bouquets of righteousness and justice in our hearts as we persevere in demanding compassion for immigrants, for laborers and for the poor? Do we say yes to a future for our planet in which we will coexist with all life harmoniously? Arrested by the Nazis for the crime of listening to foreign radio broadcasts, Chapek spent 14 weeks at Dachau before being martyred in October 1942 in a Nazi gas chamber. He is remembered around the world for how he died, but more so for what he died for and what he lived for. Thanks, Janine. Norbert Chapek is a true Unitarian hero. So we're moving into a time of meditation now. Um, to take us into the stillness, I'm going to offer a few words by Thomas Rhodes, fairly light-hearted words, describing humans in community as a bouquet of people. 
And after his brief words, I'm going to offer a few of my own, um, some prompts for your inward reflection to prepare for our time of flower communion. These words will be followed by a few minutes of stillness during which in a slight change from our usual programming, uh, we're going to have a selection of beautiful flowers up on the screen rather than our chalice. And the silence will end from some well-known and soothing music from Abby and Sydney. So again, let's each do what we need to do to get comfortable. You might want to get your feet flat on the floor to ground yourself. You might want to close your eyes. As I always say, the words, the images, the music are just an offering. And feel free to use this time to meditate in your own way. We come in a variety of colours, shapes and sizes. Some of us grow in bunches, some of us grow alone. Some of us are cupped inward and some of us spread ourselves out wide. Some of us are old and dried and tougher than we appear. Some of us are still in bud. Some of us grow low to the ground and some of us stretch towards the sun. Some of us feel like weeds sometimes. Some of us carry seeds sometimes. Some of us are prickly sometimes. Some of us smell and all of us are beautiful. What a bouquet of people we are. And as we move into shared stillness, I invite you to reflect on your place in this bouquet of people, this very church community, with all our different characteristics and ways of being in the world, all our different likes and dislikes, all our differing gifts and needs. Imagine yourself as bringing one unique bloom to this beautiful and varied bunch of flowers. I invite you to let that flower symbolise one gift that you bring to the life of this community. Perhaps a quality of your character, perhaps some practical contribution, or perhaps your simple presence here, which is so valued. It's not always easy to big ourselves up, to name our good attributes, but I encourage you to be brave and remember and acknowledge the good you bring. And remembering that community is a space in which we give and receive, I invite you also to imagine choosing another bloom from the bunch to take away with you. Let this symbolise a gift that you receive or have received from being a part of this congregation. I invite you to ponder on this in the time of stillness and silence now, for what a bouquet of people we are.
Flowers Have the Gift of Language by Richard S. Gilbert. The flowers have the gift of language. In the meadow, they speak of freedom, creating patterns wild and free as no gardener could match. In the forest, they nestle, snug carpets under the roof of leaf and branch, making a rug of such softness. At end tip of branches, they cling briefly before bursting into fruit sweet to taste. Flowers, can you not speak joy to our sadness and hope to our fear? Can you not say how it is with you that you colour the darkest corner? The flowers have the gift of language. At the occasion of birth, they are buds before bursting. At the ceremony of love, they unite two lovers in beauty. At the occasion of death, they remind us how lovely is life. Oh, would that you had voice silent messages of hope. Would that you could tell us how you feel arrayed in such beauty. The flowers have the gift of language. In the dark depths of a death camp, they speak the light of life. In the face of cruelty, they speak of courage. In the experience of ugliness, they bespeak the persistence of beauty. Speak, messengers speak, for we would hear your message. Speak, messengers speak, for we need to hear what you would say. For the flowers have the gift of language. They transport the human voice on winds of beauty. They lift the melody of song to our ears. They paint through the iron hand of the artist. Their fragrance binds us to sweet smelling earth. May the blessing of the flowers be upon you. May their beauty beckon you to each morning and their loveliness lure you each day and their tenderness caress you each night. May their delicate petals make you gentle and their eyes make you aware. May their stems make you sturdy and their reaching make you care. Thanks, Patricia. And thanks to Patricia's bees as well for their guest appearance. So we've come now to the time for our flower communion ceremony. As we heard from Janine earlier in the, in the service, traditionally at an in-person flower communion, each person would bring a single flower and uh, put it in a common vase at the start of the service. And at the end of the service, everyone would take home a different flower brought along by someone else to symbolize the varied gifts we each give and receive in the life of community. We've had to adapt the ritual a bit for something that we can do online, but the spirit remains. So in the next 10 minutes or so, I'm going to invite you, anyone who wants to, to take turns in holding up the flower you've brought, or as I said, it might be a picture or an imaginary flower that you can describe for us, and tell us about one gift that you bring to our community and one gift you receive or have received. As I said in the words for meditation, I know sometimes people are hesitant to say good things about themselves, but I do encourage you to own your gifts and be willing to acknowledge that the good that you do bring here. It might be a quality of your character or some practical contribution or your presence. Uh, all are very much valued. I've allowed about 10 minutes for this, um, but I do want anyone who wants to speak to have a chance to do so. It's possible we might run long. Um, and if in running long, people have to leave. Uh, apologies for this, but I feel like anyone who wants to speak should have a chance to do so. Um, and as Janine said at the start of the service, your contributions will be left in the recording and the podcast unless you get in touch with me straight after the service, in which case I will edit them out. So we don't get in too much of a muddle. What I'm going to ask you to do is to switch to gallery view and uh, we will put our hands up if we want to speak and I will call on you uh, and spotlight you so that everyone gets a good look at you and your flower. I hope this works. Um, so... I think that's all I need to tell you. If you want to go first, put your hand up. I will call on you and say, show us your flower and tell us about a gift that you bring and a gift you've received. Michaela, super keen. Hang on, let me spotlight you. 
There we go. I brought a gesture of be silent now in a group session when a woman who was desperate to have a second child, desperate, started to cry when everybody was invited to articulate their deepest desire. And I gestured somebody else who tried to comfort her because I knew the group would just contain this woman's desire, urgent desire. What happened was that she conceived a child that night. And so I'm, what I bring is a deep belief in miracles that happen from very small gestures and all everything around those small gestures, of course. That's me. Thanks, Michaela. Chloe. Hello. This is my favorite flower. I absolutely love sunflowers. They're just vibrant and they make me feel uplifted and they make me feel good, the colors, the vibrancy. So I'm bringing a sunflower and the gift that I bring is a curious and open mind as to the mystery of what might come up in each service. And the gift that I receive is inspiration. You know, these little nuggets of wisdom that sort of stay with me and might crop up in my head during the week and just remind me of what I need to know. Thanks, Kai. Patricia. This rose, unfortunately, doesn't smell. Um, it was sent to me by my absolute favorite nephew, so I like it very much. Um, the gifts that I bring to you um, are organizational skills, which is very boring, um, and reliability. If you ask me to do something, I will probably always say yes, unless there's a good reason why I can't. So what do I get from all of you? Well, as a new member of Kensington Unitarians, it's the excitement and joy of meeting new people and the possibility of new friendships. And thank you for that. Thank you, Patricia. Ah, uh -huh, Rachel. Hang on, just give me a second to spotlight you. There we go. I have unmuted. Can you still hear me? Right. Yeah. It's saying that I haven't. Right. Um, I'm waving a verbena, um, which I think um, is very much um, my character. This verbena actually is from my, from the middle of my tarmac path to my front door. Um, it crops up where most people would be quite upset that it's cropped up. Um, and when I take my car out, which is not very usual, I actually drive over a clump of this and it, by the time my car's out, it's sitting there as though nothing happened. Um, and I think this sheer bloody determination, excuse my French, of this particular plant probably shows my character, which is both an asset that I bring, but actually a fault as well. Um, but I hope I'm, uh, the balance is on my asset what I take from you is for the first time for so many years, a feeling of belonging in faith in a community, not being the odd ball out. I cannot tell you how precious that is to me. So thank you all so much for you accommodating me. And I'll try to be an asset in my stubbornness, not a, not a, not a failure, not a, not a liability. Thank you, Rachel.
Very good. Right, I'll produce my flower. I'm I'm totally ignorant on flowers, so someone else must identify it for me. <laughs> Can you? Can you see what oh, it is? Been yes. in painted, busy Lizzie. Do you think? That looks yeah. plausibly busy Lizzie-ish. Yeah. 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 Thanks, David. Right, right, and I'll show you a photo of where it came from, since I I don't want to move my uh laptop out that that that's that's can 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 you see there's a balcony there yes. with with a trough which is planted with flowers that's a, that picture i took at the um uh platinum jubilee that's what i took that uh, but it has got the trough there um so this is a busy lizzie i must remember that um, so I bring the gift of eco enthusiasm, which helps keep our West London Green Spirit group going. And I receive the gift of good conversation, particularly after services at church. Thanks, David. Oh, I can see Maria's getting going. Hang on. There we go. <laughs> Uh, is, it, is it okay if I go off script? Yeah, go for it. So um, this isn't, as you can see, a real flower, but it is still, and it's a thistle. So, you know, I, whenever I get an opportunity to big up my gram, I do so. So the thistle really represents my Glaswegian gran who raised 10 children in Belfast. Now, she wasn't prickly, but the circumstances in which she raised her children during the trouble certainly were. Um, and she, but she was definitely resilient. So that the thistle definitely represents my gran. I tried to adopt those qualities. It can be prickly at times. Um, and also trying to keep resilient. And then I'm gonna be really greedy and also show the pressed flowers. I don't know, are they chrysanthemums? So they are pressed flowers from her garden. So it's the anniversary of when she joins the ancestors at the end of this month. And they just really represent her to me. In terms of gifts, I hope to bring color <laughs> to conversation and the service. In terms of what you bring to me, oh gosh, where do I begin? Just reinforcing what everyone said. Such feelings of belonging, learning so much, reflection, raising mental health. Thank you. Thanks, Maria. Marianne. You're on, Marianne. I'm on, yes. Um, this is a geranium. <laughs> and it's a, it's quite a humble little flower. And very often geraniums get forgotten in, in a corner of a conservatory and they don't need that much watering. So they, they tend to be forgotten. But I'm blessed with geraniums all through the year in the conservatory. And I love, I love that, their smell. Um, so, um, yeah, th this is my contribution to, to show my love of small things that are sometimes, you know, neglected. And, uh, but I do notice them and I do value them. And, what I get from, from being with you all is that certainly I felt very small, unknown, um, you know, a bit shy when I joined the church, but you all have really helped me to, to flourish and to bloom and take the risk of being myself, which in my later years is just wonderful. So thank you very much to all. Thank you, Marianne.
Don't forget to speak into your mic so we can hear you. Yes, could you hear me? Good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, so I've got a lovely um, orange gerbera there. Um, and I chose this one because it's, um, well, the stem's quite sturdy and the head is quite, it's quite robust. There's lots and lots of petals um, which make up the whole. Um, yeah. So I kind of think that's our that's our community there. Um, and it obviously represents sunshine as well. Um, and as a member of this vibrant, colourful and diverse community, um, I like to think I bring um, authenticity and my vulnerability um, to, to, to you all. Um, and I feel that that sort of leads to deeper and meaningful connections for me personally. Um, and in return, um, I receive the gift of loving acceptance um, from you all, where I feel like I'm truly seen and heard um, by you all. Um, and it's, I feel like it's a real safe environment um, where I can be myself. So, so thank you all. Thanks, Emily. anyone else waiting in the wings? Mary. This wouldn't do for um, for the actual service because I've got a bunch here. This is a photo I took at the um, the Tower in Bloom event. Uh, earlier in the year and although they said that they weren't fully out <laughs> um, they certainly seemed to be to me uh, we had an absolutely lovely time the colors were just stunning these are so you know lots of oranges and yellows and purples uh, it, it, obviously looking at it on the screen like that with the reflections it's not doing it full justice mm. but it was a it was a beautiful idea um, beautifully executed really and um, in particular, there were lots of orange flowers, including my mum's favourite, little ordinary English marigolds, which she absolutely loved. And um, there's something, you know, I associate them with my childhood. And I think one of the, one of the things, gifts I have, I feel a, a little bit like Rachel, that it can be a plus and a minus, but is a sort of childlike sense of playfulness and or at my surroundings so I can get very very excited about a field of beautiful flowers like that um, which is kind of has been a, a huge benefit in my teaching profession when working with small children but um, can be a bit annoying I know to my daughters sometimes <laughs> uh, and what I've got from you the Kensington community is um, particularly during the pandemic when circumstances had um, provided me with quite a tough patch in my life. I felt a real haven. You provided me with a real haven and sanctuary where I felt at home more or less from the beginning. And I know that um, I don't bring that much because I'm, I'm sort of attached to another community as well, as you know, but um, you know, you have meant an awful lot to me and I want to keep one foot in your camp. <laughs> Thanks, Mary, you are very welcome. Thank you. There's my flower and I'm gonna give you a close up. See if I can make it focus. Maybe not. Um, I chose this flower particularly because it's got Unitarian uh, connotations for me. Um, this is an Echinops and they grow abundantly in the gardens of the Nightingale Centre in Great Hutplow, uh, which is a, almost a Unitarian place of pilgrimage and where we have summer school each year when we have summer school. Um, so that's why I bought this one. Um, what I think my gift, the gift I want to name is having the long view, um, having been here a long time and holding 
some of the memories and the traditions of our congregation and also the long view into the future and imagining where we're going to go next and how we're going to cope with a changing world I think that's the gift I bring and the gifts I received are uncountable but um, all the encouragement over many many years to do things I didn't think I could do that is a that is a pretty significant gift to have received So as we draw the flower communion to an end, uh, thank you all for sharing your gifts and your gratitude. I think there's no better way to close this ritual than with some words by Norbert Chapek himself. This is what he calls the consecration of the flowers. Infinite spirit of life, we ask thy blessing on these, thy messengers of fellowship and love. May they remind us amid diversities of knowledge and of gifts to be one in desire and affection and devotion to thy holy will. May they also remind us of the value of comradeship, of doing and sharing alike. May we cherish friendship as one of thy most precious gifts. May we not let awareness of another's talents discourage us or sully our relationship, but may we realise that whatever we can do, great or small, the efforts of us all are needed to do thy work in this world. Amen. Let's sing together one last time. Our second hymn is Earth Was Given as a Garden. Uh, once again, the words will be up on screen. So sing along if you like. <laughs>
few announcements now. Thank you to Janine and Patricia for reading, to Abby and Sydney for our lovely music. Thanks to Janine for co-hosting. We have virtual coffee time after the service as usual if you want to hang around for a chat. Um, and as I always say, do drop us an email if you want to say hello otherwise. We've got various small group activities going on. Coffee morning is online at half 10 on Wednesday. There's still spaces left for Heart and Soul tonight or Friday at seven o'clock. This is a contemplative spiritual gathering on Zoom, a place for prayer and deep sharing. Newcomers are always welcome. Email me to sign up. For some reason, we've had a surge of bookings this week, but we can still squeeze you in. This week's theme is curiosity. Save the date for a Lammas picnic with West London Green Spirit Group on Sunday the 31st of July. Um, I want to draw your attention to an online event that's coming up in just over a month's time. Hutclo Summer School will be presenting an online series of talks on the theme of right relationship. Uh, this is five nights in a row, seven o'clock, uh, Monday to Friday from the 22nd of August. Each night, a pair of speakers will take on some aspect of the theme. And a few of those giving the talks will be familiar to members of this congregation because me and Sarah are doing the first night and some heart and soul regulars, Laura Dobson and Alex Bryanson are also going to be involved on other nights. Next week, we'll be having a hybrid service. So you can join us either in person at the church over in Kensington or online as usual, half 10 on Sunday. All the details of our programme will be in the Friday email as usual because we've very much got a life beyond Sunday mornings. So we encourage you to keep in touch and look out for each other as best you can to nurture supportive connections. We've just got our closing words and closing music now. Um, so I invite you to select gallery view if you can, so we can all see each other and get a sense of our gathered bouquet of people. Uh, and in fact, our closing words are a responsive blessing by a friend of the congregation, Amy Zucker Morgenstern. If you'd like to join in with the response, it's very simple. May our lives bloom like the flowers. Each of us is a flower with a delicate beauty uniquely our own. We may be like sunflowers turning always towards the light. May our lives bloom like the flowers. We may be like night blooming plants, only displaying our fragrant petals when it's dark and we think no one else can see. May our lives bloom like the flowers. We may be hothouse flowers far from our lands of origin, cautiously tended within the harsh and unfamiliar climate. May our lives bloom like the flowers. We may be frothy headed like dandelions, eager to launch the new generation with the first strong gust of wind, past our own bright youth, but ready to pass our wisdom onward in precious, precious gossamer carried seeds. May our lives bloom like the flowers. Some of us sometimes spring up overnight and fade in the hot glare. May our lives bloom like the flowers. Some of us sometimes are roses, slowly assembling petal after tightly wrapped petal and revealing our full glory only when everything is in place. May our lives bloom like the flowers. Sometimes we are roadside weeds, wild loveliness bursting improbably from the dust and debris. May our lives bloom like the flowers. May we offer our beauty with the simplicity of flowers, expecting no recognition, hoping for nothing much, giving out of what we are and knowing it is enough. May our lives bloom like the flowers and may it be so for the greater good of all. Amen. Amen.